if you're looking for a Godot shader that can take a colored sprite and convert it to a grayscale version of itself, you should continue watching this tutorial. Greetings! It's Maxo Diddly. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a grayscale shader in Godot. Let's get right into it. So I have currently got a sprite 2D and we want to basically make this sprite black, white and grey based on the colours that the sprite is. And to do so, we need to go to the canvas item section of our sprite and then to the material section here. And currently the material is empty, so we want to click on it and then click on new shader material. And then you're going to see a ball. Then you want to click on the ball. And then you're going to see a shader option here and it's going to be empty. And we want to click on it. And then we want to click on new shader. And now we're going to be making the shader. So for the type, we want to make sure it's shader. For mode, we're going to do canvas item. Templates, we're going to keep on empty. Built-in shader will keep on ticked. And then we need to give it a name. So we're going to call it gray.gd shader. And then we're going to click on create. And now we've created a shader. But the shader does nothing. So we need to write some code in it. In your file system here, you need to find the shader you made. I called mine grey shader, so I'm going to click on it to open it up. And there is one line of code, and that just states what type of shader this shader is. And it's a canvas item shader. And next we're going to do void fragment, curly bracket, curly bracket, with an empty line here. And here we're going to be making our fragment function. And this function runs for each pixel of our texture. Think of it as looping through each pixel of the texture. So firstly, we're going to do vec for text underscore color equals texture, texture, comma, UV. And this just gets the color of the pixel from the texture at the current UV coordinates, which are like the pixel's position on the image. So basically, we're going to be getting the current color of the current pixel we're looking at. Then we're going to do float gray equals text underscore color dot R times 0.299 plus textColor.g times 0.587 plus textColor.b times 0.114. And this line calculates the grayscale by applying a weighted average to the red, green, and blue channels. This formula reflects how humans perceive brightness with green contributing the most, followed by red and blue, and blue contributing the least. So basically, this line of code is converting the color to a gray version of the color. Then we're going to do color equals vec4, vec3, gray, and text color dot a. So this line is going to set the current pixels RGB values to the grayscale value, and we're going to be keeping the alpha value that the current pixel has because we don't need to change that when we're applying a grayscale shader. And vec3 gray copies the grayscale value to all three channels R, G, and B. And that is all the code you need. If you're familiar with how you do this in Unity, which there is an eye up in the corner, that requires a lot more code. Godot doesn't. You just have to write what's in the fragment function for many shaders and not worry about any other part, which makes Godot awesome in that regard. So once you've got that, save your work. And yeah, you can see it in action already. So let's make another sprite and show it in action. So we're going to click on test scene and then click on plus. We're then going to type in sprite 2D to make another sprite 2D. And then I'm going to drag and drop a Mewtwo sprite into the texture. I'm then going to move the Mewtwo into our view. Then I'm going to click on material. And then for the material, I'm going to click on the empty. And then I'm going to do new shader material. Then I'm going to click on the ball. And then for the shader, I'm going to click on load. And then I'm going to load in the grayscale shader we made. And look, it works on the Mewtwo. So it works great on pixel art, but also on more complex images. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.